Hey everyone, it is so good to see you again. Can you believe that we are drawing ever closer to the end of the week? We are on Thursday already. And we're back for another devotion. We're still in the book of Jude. Now, let's look at this one profound thought. Jesus is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. Let that one sink in. Jesus is Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. Now, in the book of Jude, we've been finding out that Jude was warning us against being deceived. Being deceived by infiltrators, scoffers, those who deny Jesus Christ and try to deceive others. They try to make out that there are different ways to get to the Father. They put man-made barriers in place. They fool people, they twist the word, they manipulate, they basically sell you fakes. These are the same types of thieves that are referred to in John 10.10. 10. They are the ones who steal, kill and destroy with their false teachings and deception. The enemy can sit in the corner resting on his laurels whilst they are doing his work for them. That's why we have to be wise to it. The thieves are false teachers that deceive people. It sums it up very perfectly in Jude chapter 1, again, the only chapter, verse 4b, NIV. They are ungodly people. Deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Amen. They are ungodly people. They deny Jesus Christ. They deny that he is sovereign and Lord. In 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2, it reiterates this. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Have you ever heard the phrase, if somebody says something with enough confidence, it sounds believable? Or if you repeat a lie often enough, you start to deceive yourself into believing it's the truth. This is the same thing. Many will end up following their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. That is very, very scary indeed. These people, they infiltrated. They looked like everybody else. They spoke in a similar way, but they were twisting and turning and manipulating things. Now, Jude and 2 Peter verse 2, they sound parallel in places, don't they? Now, did one source reference? Did one inspire the other? Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? That's irrelevant. The key thing is that both are warning against heresy, against false teachings, and they are urging us to contend for the faith, to stand true on the word of God, because it is good for us, it is good for everybody else. The God-breathed, God-inspired word. Now, there's a British Baptist Christian missionary by the name of James Hudson Taylor. He's quoted as saying, Christ is either Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. It's a very similar thing to what we talk about in Alpha. In the content on Alpha, it says Jesus was either a liar, a lunatic, or he was indeed Lord. So Jesus was either Lord of all, or he was not Lord at all. There was no 50-50. Jude makes some key statements in the technical use of the language used in verse 4. Our only one, and that's a capital O, the only one, the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus, and only Jesus. There is no other. There is one Lord, one Saviour, and one way to God. Jesus even specifies this in John chapter 14, in the second half of verse 6. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is our Good Shepherd. 
No one comes to the Father except through him. Amen. Jesus is sovereign. Jesus is Lord. His titles alone denote his authority and his all-possessing power. You cannot put Jesus in a box. Jesus is our sovereign leader. He is Lord of all. Name above names, King of kings. Anyone that professes otherwise is indeed a thief and a liar. And we must beware of that. Now the use of the word Lord, which is the Greek Kyrios. Apologies for any Greek friends out there that think I've pronounced that wrong. The word Lord appears in the New Testament over 700 times and it is specifically referring to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 and 25 NIV version again it says therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. Amen. The rock, our Jesus, he is our rock. We can lean on him, we can stand on him, we can hold tight to him through any storm. There's such a powerful song by Cody Carnes, who most of you will know from The Blessing. It's called Firm Foundation. And there's a section in it that always resonates with me. Hits me so hard when I hear it. The lyrics go, and don't worry, I'm not going to sing again. The lyrics go, rain came, wind blew. But my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm going to make it through. And that's lifted straight from Matthew. When the rain came, the wind blew. It didn't matter. Because the house was built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Our unshakable king. Remember, we're part of an unshakable kingdom. So we must hold on to that. But we have to stand on the word of God. We have to pray in the spirit. So there are several questions to ponder today. Are you building your life on the rock of the Lordship of Jesus or on the sinking sand of societal norms? Are you submitting your life to the words from the Lord or the works from the media cycle? Who are you listening to? Are you shaping your life around capital K kingdom principles or around new age thoughts and processes? Are you all about the inner me? Are you about Jesus Christ, who lives in you? He's not just seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. This is our God, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and he is everywhere. He's not just stuck in one place. He is around you, he's within you, he's beside you, he's all around. Are you the master of your own destiny? Or are you a servant of the Lord, willing to be obedient, willing to put yourself down humbly before him? Not to be humbled, humble yourself. That's a very key distinction there. Christ is Lord of all or not at all. We need to be able to say with confidence and boldness on Jesus Christ, our solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Thanks for being with us today. We have some great content coming up tomorrow. If you've missed devotions from earlier in the week, please head over to audaciouschurch.com forward slash devotionals. Get yourself signed up there. And you will never miss another devotion again. If you want to catch up on older content, go to youtube.com forward slash audacious church and boom, you'll have all the content there. Have a fabulous rest of your day, dear friends. Catch you again very soon. Bye for now.